The work that I'm showing uh, at Blue Coat um, is called In the Future the Aid from the Finest Porcelain and it's basically a body of work that I've been um, uh, constantly kind of adding to. So you see uh, quite a few pieces that have been shown already in various parts of uh, the UK. Uh, but uh, there are a couple of new pieces that I'm showing at Blue Coat uh, and they're um, an inst a big installation and another one is of uh, photographs that document the performance. The idea behind the show is um, trying, it's tackling archaeology and how that's been instrumentalized as a political tool, uh, especially in the case of um, uh, Israel and Palestine. Um, uh, and it's something that you can kind of really um, see in a, in a wider picture uh, on uh, where, wherever conflict is involved and how uh, the world really functions, as uh, who tells the story, who tells the narrative. Um, and it is part of the show is actually um, a concentration on how do you intervene with that narrative history and how you can change the course of history. Um, and that is done by way of fictional film that actually really addresses the uh, present day reality of political problems in Palestine and the Israeli occupation. And also um, with a real actual performance of intervening archaeologically in, in Israel and Palestine to change that narrative. Um, so it's an attempt to kind of address what's going on um, politically, but in a completely different way, different than what you see, uh, say, in the news. Um, so it's, a, it's an at attempt to look at it from a completely different angle. In the film, you see uh, the heroine uh, who's, uh, who calls herself a narrative terrorist. She's trying to change the, the narrative of history um, by planting various porcelain that carry with it the DNA of Palestinians for future archaeologists to excavate and, and, and find. In the new installation, you is, is based on um, um, part of uh, the Old Testament where you see the, where, where God sends the, the plague, or the seven or ten plagues, I'm not sure, I should have researched more, um, on the Egyptians for imprisoning the Jewish people. And it's, uh, and the plague that I am showing are the locusts, when the locust comes and eats uh, everything in Egypt. And, and he sent seven or ten plagues uh, as a warning sign that, um, for the Egyptians to free the Jewish people. And this is kind of like a replay of that, where you see the locust plague um, in the gallery. And it's, uh, again, it's supposed to kind of serve as a an omen or as a, as a warning, uh, as a warning sign of, of how things will, um, could look if, uh, if, our, if things are left um, unchanged and if we let things continue as they are politically. Uh, I know that science fiction doesn't really, uh, is not the first thing you think of when you think of, uh, you know, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, and I've, I've always worked uh, mostly with documentary and the more I worked with documentary, the more people didn't believe what I was saying. Um, because what's happening in Israel and Palestine is really so surreal that people kind of start thinking that maybe uh, I am biased because I do come from one side of, of that you know, narrative. Um, so for me, it just became much more honest to work in a more surreal way. And I felt that it adds more to um, um, that dialogue because in, in a way you see a lot of um, uh, documentaries about Palestine and that also puts the Palestinians in a very disadvantaged position. When you constantly analyze people, they become the analyzed and you're the analyzer, the outsider who analyzes them. So I wanted the audience to be on the same par as the people that they, they watch in the film. And therefore, I wanted the films to be more seductive than really kind of like um, a, a documentary about people you should sympathize with, but more people that you are interested in. And I think that kind of changes the balance, and it's an important balance to change.